I initially started out um, on the East Front, and then I heard a uh, a friend of mine call on the radio that uh, they just needed more help, more units, send more units around to the west side of the building. Um, so I left my post where I was on the east side and ran over to the west side. And just the sight that I saw once I ran around there was uh, it was something I never like I've seen before. Like we, I, I'm in my 14th year at the Capitol. And uh, I think it's safe to say, a fair assessment to say I've dealt with over a thousand protests in that time. Because, you know, people protest anything and they have the right to, and they're allowed to, and they should be able to. Um, so I feel it's fair to say that I've uh, overseen or been a part of, in a working capacity, uh, over a thousand protests. And I've never seen anything like this. And it was, um, it was just an angry, possessed mob, what I saw. And it was the level of violence and anger that these people had. I have never seen anything like that. At least from a protest group, it was, you know, it was, it, it was, it was, if my adrenaline wasn't pumping, I guess it's, it was, it would be fair to say that I was scared out of my mind. Um, but even with the adrenaline, I still had a little bit of fear in me. And I, I think that if you didn't have any fear in you that day, I don't, I don't know if you were human. <laughs> um, so I, that's what I uh, that's what I saw initially. Um, I had a rifle, which is a long gun that that's an, in addition to my sidearm, my pistol. So that is it's a longer gun that's attached to your your body that you, we carried up here. So I didn't want to go down in the crowd and um, risk them grabbing it because it's not in a holster. It's just a sling around your body. So I just found out how can I help in any way possible. So I started um, officers that were de taken out of the fight. I started deconning them um, for when I say they were taken out the fight, that was they may have gotten sprayed with pepper spray, um, busted open to the point where they're bleeding from their face, their mouth, their eyes, um, their limbs. And just trying to I'm not a medic, but I'm a, I've had training in first aid and, you know, flushing out people's eyes and trying to put bandages on people and just get them back into the fight where they were capable of fighting and people that weren't capable of fighting, getting them to a safe place where they can be properly treated. As the crowd started growing in size and advancing on us even more, that's when there were reports of they had breached the Capitol on the inside. And um, to, to put it in perspective, the entire Capitol, it was almost like it was surrounded. So they were attacking us from all sides of the building. So it wasn't like they came in from the, the west, so the east was wide open. No, they were on the north, south, east. They completely surrounded us when they were entering the building. And um, Metropolitan Police Department, you know, they, God bless them. You know, they, you know, they saved a lot of people that day also, and they saved us. Um, they, uh, I, I, the group that I was with, it was about six officers, and I said, hey, Metropolitan doesn't really know the inside of this building, the layouts of it. We do. Let's respond inside and let them continue fighting outside because there were calls like for specific locations throughout the building. So, you know, we agreed and say, you know, that's a good idea. So the team that I was with, obviously there were Capitol Police that stayed outside and continued to fight. But um, we were kind of just like, where can we go to help? find work, I guess was the term that we use. Let's go find something to do. Let's find some work. So that's how I ended up inside of the building. And um, we st we split up into two man teams. And then shortly after is when I heard the, uh, the shots fired. Um, and that's when I got separated from the, the officer that I was with at that time, as he responded to the actual shots fired. And I um, was defending a hallway, the stairwell, that uh, if I would have left, they, the the rioters inside of the building would have had full access to um, the place where the officers were seeking aid and decon at, were in an extremely vulnerable position. So I couldn't give that position up. So now, were they were they yelling at you? Were they were they just saying like what what was the crowd doing? They were extremely angry, like that level of anger I've never seen before, and they were repeatedly um, saying the the narrative that uh, this election was stolen, that uh, 
Joe Biden isn't the president. Um, Trump is the president. Trump invited us. This is our house. Uh, you work for us. Join us. Come fight with us. You're traitors to your oath. We don't want to hurt you. You're, we're not here for you, but don't stand in our way. You know, just those kind of comments and just calling us sellouts, traitors. Hey, guys, we back the blue. We don't want to hurt you guys. We're not here to hurt you. We, we, we want the lawmakers. We want those guys. The traitors. Don't be traitors. Remember your oath. Like stuff like that. So. And I've also read where they called you the N word. And yeah. So like, you know, I throughout the day, like I said, we were continuously like we had I, I, in the academy. I've had a lot of training, you know, and even out of the academy, post academy training. I I never had insurrection training. So we we kind of were just thinking on our toes and went into survival mode. So I just was like, you can't be physically fighting with these people for this sustained amount of time. So I decided to engage with them um, verbally and just try to reason with people. And, you know, they, you know, and, and I guess I had that told them in the bit, they were yelling that they were adamant that nobody voted for Joe Biden and all that stuff. And when I yelled that I did, you know, of course, that's when the N word came out. This N word voted for Joe Biden. So, you know, I was just like, Jesus Christ, man. So I assume you're going you're at the Capitol every day now. Yeah, yeah. I have been. I have yes. been. Yeah. Right. How is that? Is that really hard or is it you're used to it now? Or? No, I got I mean, you know, I, I always viewed the Capitol, the building as a like a sanctuary. Like it was a symbol of democracy. And the fact that democracy still exists, um, even though it's very fragile, <laughs> clearly it's shown to be very fragile. Uh, the fact that it still exists, I still have a little glimmer of hope. And um, I'm doing my job, my responsibility, my duty, my service to this country um, by defending the building that, that represents it. And also not just the building, but the, uh, the lawmakers um, on either side, doesn't matter, um, because democracy doesn't care about which side is in charge. Um, is how we get is how we get to which side is in charge. That's important. So I, I kind of like perspective helps me keep it going. Uh, looking at the bigger picture, um, but yeah, there are some times where I do look at this place. I I, I I I won't necessarily flashbacks. I don't think that's accurate, but I think it's fair to say that. Um, just moments where I think about envision what did happen. So, um, you were part of like an incredibly mon mo momentous day in our country's history, and it's now a year after that. Do you wish you had handled it differently, or do you think you did the best you could? Or you I, don't have, I don't have specific regrets for that day. Um, I did everything I could. Um, I did it for the right reason to save people, to also protect people. Um, I, I don't have any specific regrets about that day. And I'm sure you've been following the news about um, all the people that were arrested. There were like 725 people arrested so far. Yeah. Is, do you feel like that there's hope that we're, that there's going to, that people understand what you went through or do you think that the country is just too stratified to, um, well, first of all, I'm very engaged. I haven't let up. I, I follow all the findings, all the new breaking news, all the indictments, all the charges. I, I keep up with that. Um, I, I won't have closure until everybody um, accountability is had for that day. So I don't think I can begin to have closure from it. That's when it'll be over. Like January 6th, like you said, it was a year ago. Like that. Uh, for like, I don't have an anniversary date. My anniversary date is going to be when everybody, the accountability and justice is served. That's when I'll have accountability and closure. So I have been following it. I will continue to. Also, I just, you know, the January 6th committee is enforcing, is having a vote on Monday. I just saw that uh, for two individuals defying subpoenas. So like I said, I'm very engaged with that. But um, yeah, I, I do have hope. I guess I'm optimistic about you know, because it's the right thing to do, I guess. But as far as actually people, getting people to believe a different narrative or anything like that, like, no, 
I'm not going to hold my breath for it because like these individuals, they, 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 they videotaped themselves. Like it was, the crime was the entire crime was caught on camera. Like, and then like, there's no, <laughs> you can't spin that narrative. Like this is what happened and that's it. Like, so I, I got to the point where I stopped engaging with people or people that I can, I can say it, if you want to give a different reason why, but that's fine. But actually what happened, that's, that's a totally different, what happened is what happened. And those facts are indisputable. So. And if you could um, send a message to everybody in America, what would you say to them? Man, I've never been asked that before. <laughs> um, I, you know what? Like I hate the, how divided this country is. Like everybody's allowed to have a different view. Everybody's allowed to vote for whoever they want for president. Um, but that never gives us the right to be mean, nasty, and disrespectful to each other. And it damn sure doesn't give you the right if your candidate loses to storm the Capitol and attempt to overthrow the election with violence. Like that's not how it works. So does it change how you do your job now? No. Or do you think you're just as maybe, vigilant? Maybe, 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 like I said, I, I've always I'm vigilant. I mean, I pay attention to things more now, but as far as like, no, I don't. At least I hope not. I try not to. I don't because I feel like once, you know, if that's the case, then like they win. Like I don't I don't I want to win. I want to control. I'm in control. So, yeah. OK, Um, I think that was pretty good. Unless there's something else you wanted to add or. Not that, not, not that I could think of. I, like I said, I, I really do believe that, you know, everybody has the right. Like I'm not. Like protest whatever you want, like that's fine. Like I do want to hammer that point home that people are allowed to vote and support free speech is a thing. Like you're allowed to vote whatever you want, that's fine. But like we've lost like human basic decency, and we're it's like we don't have any humanity left. Like the empathy is a thing of the past, um, and that's from everybody. Like that's not Republicans, Democrats, independent. That's everybody, and we just need to treat people like human beings now, instead of um, a party affiliation. You know, and it's just sad that this is where we are now. Um, I just really wish we could get past that. You know, you, you can't, you can't, you can't make any type of um, changes. Like people have, you know, want policies and things, but how can you get to that point when you're constantly? having to defend yourself before you even get to the table. Like we're, you, you get a tax, like Republicans are called rhinos, Democrats are called socialists and communists and all this stuff. And, you know, like, wait a minute, <laughs> now you got to defend yourself before you can have any meaningful discussions. So uh, I just wish we could get to that point. So just one, um, when you signed up to be a police officer, did you either in training or just in your mind, did you ever see yourself defending the Capitol in such a way like this? No, nah, no, no, not at all. Like even when it was happening, I couldn't believe what was happening. Um, like, I, like, did this really happen? Like sometimes even like looking back at the footage in the film, um, the tapes and stuff, I just, oh, I, I can't believe, I still can't wrap my head around what happened. I still can't do it because it's like, it's almost unthinkable that something like that would happen, so. But then I keep then I, but then I remind myself, should I really be surprised that it did happen? I mean, look at the climate that we're in. And now now my thought process is it definitely can happen again. 